Hey guys, it is time once again for another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So we've been moving things around the shop. Um, pretty much everything is moved today except for the 68 double cab. And back here in the corner, the buggy chassis, which is under some moving uh, blankets to keep it nice. Um, so yeah, progress, progress, progress. Today, uh, Rafa and I took the um, 64 Beetle on a pretty good ride today. We took it probably um, probably more than five miles or so. We've got a big loop that we make around orange. And the back end of the car actually settled more, which we were, we were both kind of surprised by. Um, I guess before I took it on a pretty short drive and drove it, you know, kind of slowly and stuff, and it, it just didn't finish settling. So hopefully now it's it's finished settling because we raised it again as much as we did the other day and it pretty much went back down again so uh hopefully now it's good so we do have a little bit of positive camber in the back um we need to drive the car around and and see how much it settles but uh we're pretty sure that we're there now um if not then we'll keep monkeying with it until we get it but uh that should pretty much be it the front end i think will continue to settle it doesn't have a spare tire in it now that'll probably bring it down a little bit just you know when the car is fully weighted as it would be um normally including the spare yeah front will come down a hair it's got about half a tank of gas in it so that's about right but uh anyway yeah so pretty much just you know got to put some more confidence miles on it and um the steering wheel was off a little bit as far as not being totally straight. So we got that straightened out. And that's mostly what happened to this car today. I think there were some other odds and ends that Rafa did. But yeah, this one is getting super close. So anyhow, uh, let's talk about what else happened other than driving this one and fine tuning the back and moving cars around. So. As you can see, the red Callop car is gone. Its kick-ass motor is still here, but uh, that car is actually next door now in Octavio's shop. Um, our partner shop, uh, Leo at Friaza Customs, he actually has the Callop car now. He's gonna install a stereo system in, in it for us. And he's actually putting pretty much the exact same system as in the EV bug, and I'll, I'll show that a little later, but um, Retro sound radio, couple of uh, six by nines, uh, Pioneer, I think, and then either some six or seven inch up in the kick panels. Anyway, he's gonna install that. And then Octavio will do the sliding rag top and the headliner. And then at that point, it'll probably come back. So we pretty much swapped that one, that 69 for this 69, which um, those of you that follow the channel or those of you who are watching now can probably tell this is an EV bug if you haven't seen it before. It's an EV bug. Haters are gonna hate it, that's fine, whatever. But uh, anyway, yeah, so this is a car that we're building for some customers that approached us about a year ago. Car was a total basket case. I think they might have paid like $3,000 for it. Complete pile of unloved garbage. We did a full restoration on it with the intent from day one to be an EV. Super nice car now. If you hate EVs, well, move on. But um, it's a really nice car. Even, you know, EV aside, we've done everything on this car. This car is completely rebuilt, everything on it, super nice. Um, so we're still, uh, still have to finish assembling this door. The interior is done except for the door panels have to be installed, which we have around here somewhere. And we got to put in the carpet kit and obviously the back seat, but the upholstery is all done with the exception of, of putting in uh, the carpet kit. So just a matter of installing it once all this wiring and stuff is done, which I th think it pretty much close to be uh, done. Anyway, uh, today what I was doing on this car was now that it's been driven a couple times, um, this one also settled some and we decided it was just too low. The car was was too low. So, I mean, I don't mind driving a very low V-dub and I've been driving lowered cars forever. I know how to approach driveways and speed bumps. I didn't want to give a car that low to a customer who probably isn't accustomed to driving a slammed Beetle. So today I 
raise the rear suspension an inch and I'll do the same to the front to bring the car up. So it'll, don't get me wrong, it'll still be low. It's not gonna be like the 64 over there like they came stock, but um, it's not gonna be what I would call necessarily slammed, which is pretty much what it was before. But anyway, while the fenders are off, um, having a little touch-up paint done on uh, this side, the the, uh, the passenger fender. But since I've got it all off, you can just see, like I said, um, this is a really n nice car. At least we, we think it is. Um, it's pretty much had everything done. So I think even for people who hate the fact that it's an EV conversion, hopefully you can still appreciate the fact that we took a pretty much complete basket case piece of garbage car and we turned it into into this and you can see some of the stuff going on here with it these are bus um, cv joints we wanted to go with something a little stronger because the ev motor has a lot of torque instantly and then you can see we've got the the uh, the mid mount style brace up there We've got a truss bar here kind of triangulating the back because, again, this thing's a torque monster. So, you know, we did what we could to kind of stiffen things up back here. Heavy-duty mounts on the cradle and so on. So, yeah, big brakes all the way around. Uh, Will Woods front and back. Four piston up front and uh, two piston in the back. And uh, let's see, what else? Pretty, pretty wide, sticky tires. These are... Um, 205 55s in the front and 195 55s in the front. So when I agreed to build this car for the owners, I said, I want your car to be safe. So we're going to put good suspension on it. We're going to put good brakes on it. We're going to put good tires on it. And that's kind of what I insisted because this car could definitely be a handful. It's got 120 horsepower and I think it's 175 foot pounds of torque. Keep in mind though that torque is basically from from a stall so from a standstill when you mash the throttle pedal that 175 comes on instantly so again if somebody doesn't know what they're doing they could probably get themselves in trouble with this car pretty easily that's why you know again i wanted big brakes lots of traction lowered um, suspension and so on and so forth so the car would um, you know handle and, and stop and turn reasonably well but anyway yeah so there you have it pretty clean all up underneath there again everything's new the pans were redone by brian washburn and team uh, transmission is a two-speed transmission that's geared for a for an ev pretty much you would use low gear uh, around town and so on the only time you'd use high gear would be if you got on the freeway, say, and you were going faster than probably like 55 miles an hour or so, then you would drop it into high. It does have a clutch that you would use at that point, uh, clutch pedal. But when you take off from, um, from a stop sign, you don't need to use the clutch because the motor stops when the car stops, and then it starts again when, when you, uh, you know, start moving. So clutch is only used going from uh, low gear to high gear when the car is moving. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this one. So this one's gonna be probably in our shop now until it goes to its owner. So um, uh, yeah, you'll be, you'll be seeing more of this one here. Um, tomorrow, hopefully I'll get the back of the car back together and then probably go ahead and adjust the front suspension, which we put a two inch narrowed adjustable beam on. So that's much, much easier than the back which is frankly a pain in the ass on an IRS car because you have to disconnect the axles. And then this is the, the style with the, the dual spring plates that are on either side of the trailing arm. So you got to drop the trailing arm all the way by disconnecting the axle, the shock, everything. And it's pretty much a giant pain in the butt. But I did manage to, uh, to lower both sides, or raise rather both sides, um, an inch, a hair over an inch it should be on paper at least. So, and then I started futzing around with the, this door and windows. I just kind of stuck this in temporarily, just kind of mocking it up, checking things out here. But the, uh, we got new glass for this car. The glass, like the rest of the car, was pretty much garbage with a lot of scratches. So we got new glass and I put the, the lift channel on it uh, just a little while ago. So yeah, be kind of focused on this one while we're 
wrapping this one up and getting back to that one and keeping that one going and keeping this one going and then we'll probably go ahead and see about getting this buggy body maybe in another week or so. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of things going on here, keeping us pretty busy. And then we still have Jacob's car. The paint should be done here in the next day or so on that car. And then uh, of course the, the red Kellogg bug is over next door, like I said. So it'll be back and then we'll be back on it. So yeah, quite a bit going on in the shop. It's good to be busy. Um, thank goodness for that. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.